another amazing interview on this beautiful uh, Wednesday, almost said Tuesday, it's been a busy week on this amazing, beautiful Wednesday morning, almost afternoon here in Seattle. Welcome to the Daybreak Star Radio Network. We're honored and privileged. Our next special guest for our Zoom interview that we uh, highlighted and showcased on our website and of course our social media. I would like to welcome Donna from the Sierra Miwok Nation. Donna, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. How are you today? I'm doing great, thanks. And where are you located? Um, I actually uh, live in Renton, Washington, outside of Seattle. Not too yep. far from us. Yeah. And if you could please introduce yourself and state your tribal affiliation. So I know I, I know I kind of did that, but you know, I'd like the guests to uh, sure. also do that as well, please. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, officially, my name is Donna Helter Bridal Baker. Um, I am a descendant of uh, my grandmother who uh, Bernice Hunter, who was affiliated with Central Sierra Miwok. I'm not actually uh, tribal affiliated in the sense of um, a federally recognized tribe. Uh, however, I am trying to get there. Uh, I was adopted. I was adopted when I was uh, 10 months old. So I actually uh, learned of my uh, native ancestry um it, like in my 30s so i was able to connect with my biological family awesome how did mm -hmm. you get into making art donna and uh what are you uh what are your preferred styles when you're getting into the mindset to you know compose your next piece well um you know i've always been interested as long as i can remember you know when i was a child i you know, I dabbled in art, but as I got older, um, I, I've used art as a, a tool for healing. And, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a U.S. Army veteran, and I've, I've been in different types of um, groups that have helped kind of harness my, my artistic creativity. Uh, late, my latest venture was um, dealing with... Um, an art therapist who helped me really engage and open up uh, some some really interesting ideas uh, that have come forth, you know, to, to help me get to where I need. Um, I did a six month uh, art residency program in North Carolina last year that kind of spanned from the, the latter part of last year to uh, the beginning of this year and actually flew out in March and did an art show and a talk with them. And I, I basically, um, it, it was centered around my ancestry. Uh, so basically, I think I entitled it like uh, my tribe, my uh, identity, because that's what I've been trying to work through being adopted. Oh, I think we lost you. Can you hear us? We can't hear you, Donna. And um, a lot of like materials such as recycled paper bags and you know things that I could affix to the canvas. And I created um, you know uh, what I felt was a sense of my identity, my tribe. Awesome, Marcus. So when you were starting out as an artist, like who was someone who really inspired you or was there a specific piece or someone or a mentor in your life? Like what inspired you to really get into art? Because I know you said you dabbled, but what really wanted to make you take off and go, go the extra distance? Well, I think when, uh, when I was in high school, uh, I, you know, I took like AP art uh, in high school. And um, I think who really inspired me was my 12th grade art teacher. Uh, she was an older lady and she really like stepped in and, and, and helped me to uh, hone in on, on, you know, my, my own special techniques on how to, you know, derive where I was getting to. Also, a lot of the artists uh, uh, that were around me, like other, um, other people in my class, you know, um, as of late, I mean, I, you know, I enjoy like so many different artists, you know, Picasso was one of my favorites. I love Frida Kahlo, you know, I love her story and, and it just kind of 
it speaks to like kind of like who I am, especially being indigenous, you know, um, other George O'Keefe, um, there's other artists, there's a, uh, there's this, uh, these twins, Oscar Mayos, who do like, they go out and they do art like on buildings and stuff. So just, there's so many, it's just so many different people and just everyday people, you know, you're on Facebook, Instagram, and you see these people and it's just like, wow, this is amazing. You know, it just, it kind of like rejuvenates you and gives you like all of these different ideas, you know? Awesome, Ghana, welcome to the Daybreak Star Radio Network once again. Our motto here at our radio network is indigenizing the airways. And nice. uh, we're getting people downloading our app every day and our listenership is growing every day. If you're just tuning in right now, we're honored to be chatting with Donna from Sierra Miwok Nation. And I'd like to ask, how does art uh, help you heal from you know everyday traumatic aspects of our daily lives? Well, you know, um, when I'm having a bad day and I do struggle with PTSD, I was diagnosed with PTSD, service connected. Um, I, you know, I do struggle every day. And, you know, most people do, especially with this epidemic that we've had with COVID. Um, I think, the thing with art is that you can go there. It kind of reminds me of reading a book. You know, when you read a book, you're pulled into the adventure, right? You're pulled into just this totally different place that you don't you don't have to exist like where you're at in quote unquote reality. You can exist in your art, you know, and it can take you it can take you into so many different places. And there's so many different intricacies that can help you, you know, uh, heal. You know, um, something that I like to use, which is more tactile, is I like to paint with my hands. I know it sounds childish, but a lot of times when I'm laying color down on canvas, I like to put my hand in the paint and I like to slather it and, and mix colors using my hands because it's like it's something that you feel, you know, you're connected to your piece. And I think for me, that's really healing. Absolutely. And, you know, I know a lot of artists today are doing that, especially like when we, you know, when we talk fashion, you mm. know, that paint splatter look is super, super, uh, super popular. In fact, I want to, I, I, I like to do, I kind of like to be expect the unexpected during interviews. So I want to show you something real quick. Sure. <laughs> I brought the thing, I brought the thing today, especially to show you, but this was a uh, custom custom hat that I, uh, that, that I had, uh, that I had done and I figured, you know, you as an artist would, uh, would might, might appreciate that, you know? So. I, I love that. I love that. Um, you know, it's interesting because I'm getting into, uh, I've had cards. I finally have had cards made for my art. And I'm like, I look at them like, oh, this is so cool. I took it a step further and, and I've been thinking, you know, I want to put my art on fabric, like the, the designs that I've done. So actually, I'm going to show you something since you share with me. Yeah. So the, I, I had some vans custom made. Oh, those are cool. I don't know if you can see this, but these yeah. guys are my little buffaloes from uh, one of my pieces. So I just, I had it designed and I'm like, you know what? This would be cool if I could make them a little bit bigger because they're tiny, but, but yeah, it's just the sky's the limit, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Marcus. So I'm curious. So you mentioned mm -hmm. that you like sometimes for your process, you like to just like, just paint and just let the, let the paint splatters go. But I'm curious, like, do you, is that, do you usually do things spontaneously or do you sometimes go in the studio and have like an idea in mind of being like, this is what I'm going to do and you have it all pre-planned out? You know, that's interesting that you asked that. And, and I wonder sometimes about other artists, how they have their, you know, do they plan on making what they make? You know, it's interesting because I deal with more abstract. And I think with the abstract, no, I have, I have no clue. I have no idea what I'm doing. It just kind of comes out of me. It just exudes, you know, and it, it lands on my canvas, you know, um, other times I, I notice like when I'm not doing mixed media, when I say I do watercolor, it's with more intention, more purpose, because I feel like I'm more or less copying, which I've done in the past. Watercolors, for example, um, I have utilized like magazines to, to practice, you know, birds in bloom. Oh, there's a bird. I'm going to copy this bird. So that's with intention, right? But yeah, with my craft and using mixed media, I'm just like, you know, 
this is whatever, you know, whatever goes. And it, and it just this, this creation comes out of it, you know? That's awesome. How does, how does being native uh, influence your, you know, artistic style all, overall? And how do you incorporate native styles into your everyday work pattern? So, um, like I mentioned, I was on a six month residency uh, program that I, that I, that I explored. And I think overall, that was my first time really uh, um, actually using my ethnicity, my indigenousness to create art that was more or less like native artwork. And so the thing for me is that, so I was adopted. My mom that raised me was Japanese. My dad was German American. Okay. I found out in my thirties and I'm 53 now that I I'm native. So for me, I remember walking into the, the cultural center and I met, um, Vera Maldonado who was, yeah, who, who, who was inside of the uh, gift shop and I looked all around and I was like, wow, you know, I, in my mind, I'm like, there's no way I could actually create something like this. Right. Because I would feel like I'm copying. Right. And I explained to her, I said, you know, I'm native American, I'm an artist, but you know, I'm, I don't feel like I'm a native artist. You know, she told me, she said, you know what, you're native and you're an artist. That's all that matters. You know, you create what you create, you know, and that, that really inspired me that she was like, you know, yeah, we, we recognize you, you know, you don't have to create this, you know, right. Right. I will tell you, I, I began creating, um, like spirit totems and a lot of the, a lot of the pieces that I've done, um, I have used animal patterns in my art. As a matter of fact, um, a lot of times I'll trace a pattern, say like a bear, and my thought process is that I've used the recycled paper bags or whatnot, and they're painted on and whatnot, and I've cut them out and applied them to the canvas. So that's my my creation. That's my idea of 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 I want to say being um, connected to nature because I think that's one of the biggest things that you hear about natives, but I think it's embedded in my DNA because I've always been connected to the land and to the, you know, to, to the animals and to nature. So that's my creative process of being a native artist. Awesome. Thank you. So one yeah. question you have is what advice would you give up to up and coming native artists, especially young ones too, like who are still like in their crafts, still trying to like, you know, figure out their voice, figure out like what they'd like to do. What would be some advice? You know, I think you gotta be true to yourself and don't second guess your your creativity. If you create something, and I ha this happens to me, you create something, you look at it, you're like, oh, I don't like this. It's just not, it's not what I'm trying to achieve. Or you look at other people's art and you feel like, oh, I want it to be more like that. Well, that's not being true to yourself because that's their art. That's their creation, not your creation. So I do, without a doubt, be true to yourself. And you know, you don't, I know that sometimes there's failure involved, you know, don't look at it as a, as a failure, look at it as a hiccup. You know, there are a lot of times when I've, I've created something that I absolutely can't stand. I hate it, but you know what? I'll put it aside and it may sit there for months, a year, maybe I'll go back to it and I might see something different in it from a different mind perspective. And then I may recreate or do something, uh, that's more meaningful at that time. So whatever you do, again, just be true to yourself, create, 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 you know, every day do something, even if it's, if you don't feel like it, do something anyway. Donna, have you ever applied for a grant or received a grant as an artist, uh, possibly a King County grant? And if you could describe what that process was like and, uh, uh, you know, how it, how it transpired for you. You know, I've not applied uh, for a grant. Uh, I have read about them, um, but as of yet, no, I've not. I've not applied for a grant. I would be interested in learning how to do that. 
Awesome. Well, we yeah. can probably we can probably help uh, instruct that. I know we have one more question, Marcus. Yeah. Sure so, thing. so what's next? <laughs> what's next? Hmm. You know, that's a big question, Marcus. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking on that right now. Uh, right now, I'm in this. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm in this mode where I've been gifting a lot of my art to friends across the nation, and uh, just kind of surprising them with. Uh, with my art pieces, which has been going really well. It just gives me great joy to, to do, uh, do my art and feel appreciated by people that love me, you know? Um, it, it's just, it gives me such joy. So I'm not really sure what's next, <laughs> um, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be working on uh, some stuff. I, I, I remember talking to um, Jose, and uh, the curator there, and um, we were discussing like, yeah what's kind of what's next and i really you know there was a question he asked me and it's i think it's really um trying to f figure out what it is that i do want to work on how 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 it will impact me how it may impact you and everybody else you know so i'll let you know i'll let you know when i find out <laughs> thank you again donna for joining us